Have you ever said this? What was I thinking? <laughs> ever said that? What was I thinking when I wore white after Labor Day? Is that a thing or is it Memorial Day? Okay. Thought that'd be funnier than it was. What was I thinking when I spent money on... What was I thinking when I said... What was I thinking when I entered into this relationship? What was I thinking? Ever said that? What was I thinking? We need a breakthrough in how we think. We need a breakthrough in how we love. We need a breakthrough in how we respond to one another. A month ago at our prayer night, and let me say something about prayer night. Some people are afraid to come to the prayer night because you're going to be put on a stage under a spotlight with a mic and say, okay, it's your turn to pray. That's not what's going to happen. Many people say, I can't come to prayer because I, I don't want to pray out loud and I don't even, I don't even want my, my voice to sound like on the microphone and, and I can't pray out loud and I don't want to pray around people. <sighs> Take a breath. That's not what the prayer night's about. It's not about you. It's a time to fall on our faces and pray. And some people literally do, but... It's kind of a metaphorical statement, but we just come humbly and we worship. Our worship band, we, we praise and we pray together in small groups, uh, separately. We walk around the space. It's just a free, open time to pray and to prioritize our relationship with God. And as last month in our prayer time, I really feel like God gave me this, this thought of breakthrough. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at this concept of breakthrough. We need a breakthrough in the way we think. We need a breakthrough in our marriages. We need a breakthrough with our children. We need a breakthrough in our careers. We need a breakthrough in our finances. We need a breakthrough. Amen? Amen. And it starts this way. We need a breakthrough because we are too busy. Busy. The enemy uses busyness as a tool to destroy us. The enemy uses busyness to keep us distracted. When we're busy, we're not experiencing God's power. We're not experiencing God's presence. The enemy keeps us busy. And then we rationalize our existence through our busyness. When I'm busy, I feel good about myself. When I'm busy, I'm doing something. When I'm busy, I'm adding to something. But busyness can destroy. And you know what busyness leads to? Bitterness. And we're bitter because I'm so busy, but I have nothing to show for it. I feel like I'm working so hard, but I don't have fruit for my labor, and that makes us bitter. So busyness leads to bitterness, and then that bitterness can lead to a betrayal. We betray God's call. And God's call is to give us abundant life. And then we might betray a spouse because the enemy enters in and says, you could probably do better than that. That's your problem, is your partner. And you deserve something better. And a betrayal happens. Or you betray a friend. Or you are betrayed. Busyness can lead to a bitterness and that bitterness sometimes leads to a betrayal, which leads to the fourth word, breakthrough. We need a breakthrough in our busy schedules. We need a breakthrough in that bitter root. And we need a breakthrough in the betrayals that we've experienced. Amen? We need a breakthrough. The one thing that you keep from God will ruin your life. Sermon in a sentence. You're dismissed. The one thing that you keep from God will ruin your life. I look at it this way. Your life is like a house. And you can give up every single room in the house. You can have the living room, the dining room, the bedroom, the garage, the man cave. You can have the whole house. That's a lot, right? I feel like I'm giving up a lot, but I'm going to keep one closet. Sound good, God? You can have the whole house. That is a lot. I'm doing a lot. I'm giving you my whole house, but 
I'm just going to keep that closet, okay? Is that okay? The enemy will enter into that closet and burn the whole house down. Whatever you keep from God, the enemy will use it to ruin your life. I used to say it this way, God's a part of my life, and I'm so happy to have God a part of my life, like my family's a part of my life, like the Kansas City Chiefs are part of my life on Thursday night, like my dogs are a part of my life, like my friends are part of my life, like my, God, he is a part of my life. I've changed the way I think. He's not a part of my life. He is my life. Big difference. A part of your life or all of your life. The one thing that you keep from God, the one closet that you keep from God, the enemy will seize it, attack it, and will burn your life down. We need a breakthrough this morning. We need a breakthrough this morning. And it starts with our bodies and how we are offering our bodies. It starts with our life and how we are offering our life. Our offering to Jesus is how we live our life. How you live your life is your offering to Jesus. Is he just a part of your life? So you're just offering it to him on Sunday? We need a breakthrough. And this morning, as we begin this four or six weeks journey, it starts with our bodies. Now, every Wednesday night, we've been gathering over here in this room from 6.30 to 8 for a men's Bible study. We've been studying Romans 12, going through it verse by verse as men together, fighting for our families, fighting for our marriages, fighting for our friendships. We need each other, men. So every Wednesday night from 6.30 to 8, we are gathering in this room right off the, the hallway here. And going through this scripture, women have been doing the same thing across the street, upstairs in the worst room in the church. we got to change that. I I get that. Women are going through a six-week study with my wife, Tanya, who who rarely leads a Bible study. She's a very behind-the-scenes person, but she's really felt stirred by God to lead this Bible study for women. 6.30 to 8 on Wednesday nights, going through the book of James. And then in, in this space, we had over 100 people around tables with legit food talking about the sermon and getting deeper into the sermon and and studying God's word together, stirring up community and stirring up love and stirring up mercy. We need to change the way we think. And that comes from saturating ourselves in the word of God. This morning, turn with me to Romans chapter 12, and we're only going to do two verses this morning. Okay, nine o'clock praised and clapped and they were so excited because if you're new to Whole Point, sometimes we go through like 20 verses. And I love God's word. I love to, to read every word and every phrase. And we are about God's word here at Whole Point. This is not about a man on the stage underneath the spotlight. This is about the word of God. And God has something specifically to say to everyone in here through his word. So Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'm going to be reading from three, two translations and one paraphrase, Okay. Two translations and one paraphrase, beginning with the New Living Translation and then the New International Version and then the message. Romans 12, 1 and 2. This is the word of the Lord. And so, okay, I can't even get past those two words. And so, that's anticipatory. And so, are you ready? It's not a, oh, and so, here we go again. And so I got this big job I have to do. And so, you know what so-and-so is doing? This is an and so. This is a a therefore. This is an anticipatory language. We are expecting now what God is going to say. I really believe that's what Paul was saying. And so, therefore, here's what's going to happen. Are you ready? Okay, two people are over here. Excellent. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God Because of all he has done for you, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This truly is the way to worship him. 
Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, the NIV changes it up a little bit, so look at the differences. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, lastly, the message paraphrase says this. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Tweet it. That is a great tweet. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Hallelujah. So if we want breakthrough, we have to totally offer our bodies to God. Every room in the house, everything. Now, when in the Old Testament, priests used to sacrifice animals. They would put animals on the altar to sacrifice, and they would cut the animal into pieces to sacrifice to God on the altar. Now, we have many pieces in our life. Amen? We have many elements, aspects of our life. We have to take every piece of our life and put it on the altar to offer to God. It's everything. If you want breakthrough, it begins with this offering. The NIV says, in view of God's mercy, we offer our bodies. So that's our view, our focus. Because of the mercy God showed us, we offer our bodies to him. That's where we get it off. Our view sometimes is for our own brand. Our view sometimes is for our own desires. So that is our view. In view of me, I'm going to offer my body to God. So I'm not going to offer God my time because it's in my view. But in view of God's mercy, in view of all God has done for you, in view of the cross, what other response is there? Anybody with me? Whatever response is there in view of God's mercy, we give it all. We need to transform the way we think. Do you want breakthrough or not? If you want breakthrough, it begins with offering our bodies every aspect, every piece. We cannot make a partial sacrifice. We cannot do this with our leftovers. Well, I would come to prayer night, but I'm too busy. Busyness leads to bitterness, which leads to betrayal. This is not something we do in our leftover time. You know what? When I get around to it, I will do my laundry. When I, when I, need to, when I get around to it, I'll, I'll pray. It's not like that. I procrastinate my laundry all the time. You don't procrastinate time with God. You don't procrastinate giving your body to God. We must offer everything. It's a holy sacrifice. It is set apart. It's devoted. It's dedicated. That's the kind he will find acceptable. That's the 
true way to worship is we give him everything. So we can't get past verse 1 and and move into the rest of this breakthrough sermon series until we realize if we want breakthrough, it has to be every room in the house. It has to be all pieces. It has to be all parts. Nothing held back. Everything to you, God. You have it all. Then breakthrough. It is hard to do on our own strength. But all things are possible in the name of the Lord. We offer, we're obedient. There are men, women, and children right now that are living this way in Houston. They have nothing. They're offering everything because they have nothing. They they need everything God has. We need to live with that same desire. What are you holding back? Because whatever you're holding back will ruin your life. The enemy will take that one piece That one thought, that one room, that one thing that you're holding so tightly to, you're so afraid to let it go because you're afraid of what people will think. We need to be focused on what Jesus says, not what people think, and let it go. Because the thing you won't let go will destroy your life. Verse 2. Don't copy, don't conform to the world. Now, as we enter into verse two, I want you to think of three words. Conform, transform, and the word then, T-H-E-N. Conform, transform, then. Three words. Conform, transform, then. Paul encourages us not to get comfortable in the world. If you let that happen, the world will determine how you think. The world will determine how you spend your time. The world will determine how you spend your money. Conform means to have the same shape. Conform means to have the same shape or mold. It's what you obey. It's what you're similar to. It's what you're identical to. The message says, don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. The world and how we're fitting in and how we're just following culture, how we're conforming, molding, shaping, copying the behavior. This was an argument I had a lot in the 80s when I was a teenager. I loved music, and I loved the beat, but not the words. So my parents were like, well, the words are terrible. And I was like, but the beat is great. But the words are terrible, but the beat is great. I love Van Halen. Yes, but they, that song, Running With The Devil, I'm like, oh, yeah. They do say that in that song. A great riff, a great beat. But I was blending in so easily and so quickly that I didn't know it was affecting me. Okay, you're not convinced. When my daughters were little, we loved to wrestle. I used to like pick them up by a hand and a foot and just throw them on the bed and then come up with a power elbow, bam, and we just would wrestle around. And in one moment, we were really loving the movie Pocahontas, and there was a scene in Pocahontas where Cocoam and John Smith had a little altercation because they were fighting for Pocahontas, and John Smith, I think it was John Smith, maybe not, but shot Cocoam. It was just a really disturbing scene. I'm wrestling with Abby one time, and she got really amped up, and we were wrestling around, and she jumped up, and she goes, Pew! I kill you, Daddy. I'm like, what just happened? My three-year-old just killed me with a gun. Pew! I kill you, Daddy. And she learned that from the scene where John Smith took the gun and killed Cocoam. Oh, that's what it was, because I was playing Cocoam. Remember? I was like, oh, I'm Coco, I've been throwing you around. And you were like, pow, I kill you, Daddy. Okay, I didn't convince you much. But you see how conforming to the world, conforming to the world, we can become so well-adjusted without even thinking. What we're spending time with comes out in our deeds. And can we just rewind that last 10 minutes? That was, didn't really fit. I, I get it. We become so well-adjusted that What we spend time with comes out in our words and comes out in our deeds. Paul says, do not be like or similar to the world 
in any way. Do not copy. Do not conform. Do not let the world shape you, mold you, influence you, or pull you into its direction because it will destroy you. It will burn the whole life down. Do not be conformed. Second word, transformed. Transformed into a new person by changing the way you think. Transform means to change into something different. Since we're on the 80s, there was something called the transformers. They would transform into something different, yes? Transform means to change into something different. The Holy Spirit changes us from the inside out. And this happens by him changing our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our character, our actions, and our feelings. All these are done from the inside out. All of this is done inside of us. And that's God's goal, is to make us more like Jesus. And so Paul says we need to renew our minds. We need to quit watching Pocahontas and listening to Van Halen. We need to be careful what we watch on TV, what we're watching in the theater. Be careful what we listen to, what our attention is on, what we think about. We need to be careful about what we do and even who we hang out with. We need a breakthrough to renew our minds. We have to saturate our minds with what God says through his word, saturating our mind with scripture. Now, transformation takes more than a promise to try harder. Transformation takes more than just that promise. I'm going to do better. It's changing the way you think. The key to the Christian life is not how hard you try to be good. The key to the Christian life is not how hard you try to be spiritual. The key to the Christian life is not how hard hard you try to transform your mind. The key to the Christian life is how close you get to Jesus. And in his presence, he changes the way you think. We need a breakthrough. We need a breakthrough in how we think and how we speak and what we do. Last word, then. Paul says this, after we've resisted conforming to the world and started being transformed, then you'll know God's will, God's plan for your life. And that plan is good, and it's perfect, and it's pleasing. We resist copying the world. We resist blending into culture. We resist conforming. We enter into God's presence, and he begins to transform us. Then he tells us his plan for our life. And guess what that plan is? It's a good plan. It's a perfect plan. It's a satisfying plan. It's a pleasing plan. It's a plan of breakthrough. Don't be conformed. Be transformed. Then you will understand what God wants you to do. Amen? God's plans for your life exceed the circumstance of your day. God's plan for your life exceed the challenges of the day. God's plan for your life exceed the obstacles of your day. No matter your past, No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've said in the past, God's radical grace covers you. It doesn't expire like milk. God's radical love covers you. Hallelujah. We need a breakthrough in the way we think. We need a breakthrough in how we're loving We need a breakthrough in what we're saying. We need a breakthrough in our lives. This is the word of the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Stand with me as we pray. And get back to the core. The one thing you keep from God will ruin your life. The one thing you keep from God will destroy your life. That one thing that you're just gripping right now, you're not going to give it up, will destroy you. Do you want a breakthrough? Have you been longing for something different? Walking around these walls, I thought they'd fall by now. We just sang about it. God is faithful. God promises to give you everything you need, every good thing we learned last week. So whatever you're holding on to, whatever you're not willing to give up, the enemy will seize it, attack it, and destroy your life. Do you want breakthrough? It begins with all pieces, all elements, all aspects, everything. Resisting the world, resisting the temptations, entering into God's presence, letting him transform the way you think, then God's plan is back on the back wall, then God's plan will fill your life. Wow. Is there even a, a question? Even a, a debate? You mean I can give up something that would destroy me? I can give it up? Hallelujah, yes! So as we pray, we want to start our, our, our series off with just a, a full, wholehearted giving. Many people came in the first service letting go of the thing that's ruining their life. Again, these people coming forward, don't focus on them. Don't be intimidated by them. They're just here to pray and support you. They're not going to ask you your last sin. They'll just pray for you. They'll just embrace you. They'll just pat you on the back, or they'll just do nothing. They're just here if you need some prayer support. But as we close, it's time that we give up everything, every piece. That one thing that we're holding on to, that one room in the house, that one closet in the house. You got the whole room, God, or the whole house, God. Isn't that enough? No. That one thing you're keeping to yourself will ruin you. Do you want breakthrough? It's time to step out. Not as a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice. We lay our lives on the altar. We lay our lives at the feet of God and give him everything. In view of everything he's done for us, we offer our bodies. So as we pray, seek the Lord. If you need to step out and come to an altar, you need to kneel at your seat, just disconnect from that person sitting next to you, Dedicate, make a commitment. Don't hold anything back. Let's pray. Seek the Lord. This is not a game. This is not a game. Whatever hold the enemy has on you, let it go. Whatever you're holding back from God, it will ruin your life. Let it go. Offer everything you have this morning. I want to be clear. I'm asking some of you to come forward if, if that's something God is stirring in your heart. Let's pray. We need you, Jesus. We actually need a breakthrough right now at 1220. The enemy is not welcome here. The sign says welcome home, but that... It's not for the enemy. Breakthrough, Jesus. We want to offer everything we have to you, every piece, every aspect, every room in our house, everything. We want a breakthrough. Breakthrough will not happen when we are holding on to the ways of the world, when we are conforming and copying the behaviors and customs of this world. We're giving up everything, our bitterness, our anger, our questions, 
our frustrations, everything we're giving to you. Pray these things in your name and say, so be it. And amen. Amen. Thanks for being here, beloved. To God be the glory. You're dismissed.